Hey, and welcome to the Herbert Denard Show. We're shooting on location. We have with us Dr. Ariel White, Jr. Welcome. Thank you, and I'm glad to be here with you. you now a president of the NAACP, we are aware that, are aware that you uh, have, uh, have been recording music for a long, long time, a lot of albums. How many albums? You know, I stopped counting. I think we must have about 18 or 20 out by right now. Gospel album, top selling albums. Who are some of the people you have recorded with? Well, we've had Joe Lagun of the Mighty Clouds of Joy. He's recorded with us, the Williams Brothers, uh, Donald Vales. We've had several different uh, national groups uh, record with us. Okay, but now you're president of the Atlanta chapter, the NAACP. How long have you been president? I've been president of the Atlanta NAACP ever since 1997. And it's been, a, it's been quite a ride. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's quite interesting. How do you go from uh, the your pastor of a very very large church in Atlanta, Mount Ephraim, and 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 you uh, recording artist? How do you find the time to then and now concentrate on being president of the NAACP in the city of Atlanta? Well, one of the things that we do have in Atlanta is an executive director who handles the day to day. Uh, movement of the NAACP. I'm the public spokesman for them. Uh, I'm the one that says, yay, yay, nay, nay, so they can call me wherever I am and we can direct them. I'm the one who does the uh, public uh, statements. So I've got a good staff, both at the church and uh, at the NAACP. And you know, when you've you got staff and they know their jobs, it's not hard for you to do what you need to do. But the NAACP president is not a paid position. The executive director of the NAACP is a paid position. Is that correct? That's right. The presidency is not paid, and the executive director is a full-time paid position. Plus, we have a full-time uh, assistant, administrative assistant to the executive secretary. So tell us some of the things that the NAACP has been involved in in the city of Atlanta. Well, now, and we, we are involved in what's going to be nationally, uh, you're going to hear more about, uh, there is a lawsuit, a class action suit against the predatory lending across this country, and we are certainly involved in that. We've been involved in last year with the Janalo Wilson case where uh, he's now a free man and in school. Uh, just in the last year, I had a young man who was uh, expelled from Georgia State. Uh, what I saw was uh, unfairly because he had already gone four years he was with, within three weeks of graduation and they expelled him uh, you know they when you have the fraternities come together and they accuse him of hazing uh, yet he was not the only one but he was the only one that they expelled so uh, they came to us and I went down to Georgia State and they sent two uh, PhD African-American women in and they were saying, oh, this will teach him a lesson for life. And I hit the ceiling. They said, well, we understand you, but um, we can't do anything. I said, well, who can? They said, the dean of students. I said, where is he? And they said, I said, you tell him, I want to see him. And I went in and talked with him and said, now, we can make this real nice, or we can make it pretty ugly. That young man needs to graduate. I said, if he's done something wrong, punish him but he needs this degree and uh, when I got through with him uh, they reinstated him he graduated this June and uh, wrote a great big letter thank you he said had it not been for you in the NAACP I would not have ever gotten my degree so we're, we're doing the grassroots things that people never hear about uh, but then it then of course last year I started the I started the brouhaha uh, when I said, back off Michael Vick, let him have his day in court. And uh, I was attacked across the country, but it's done so much for me there in Atlanta and across the country where I see people who recognize they come and say, we want to say thank you for standing up for Vick. So we're, we're doing a lot of stuff. I, I see you, you're quite active. There's racism still in America. We all recognize that, but I have to ask this question. What do you attribute to the, uh, the phenomenon of Barack Obama? Why, how can he win in Iraq? Not Iraq, what I'm talking about. How, 